I, I, I honestly think as with um, as with with all situations in games, um, if you're in a confident mood, if you're in a, a a bright mindset, I think all players want to be getting back out on the field and they enjoy it. If if you're not in such a good place, it becomes an absolute grind, and and it can be uh, very very difficult. So. Um, Players, as you can well imagine, uh, are, are very upbeat, very confident after the, the midweek exploits. Um, our first venture into uh, Champions Cup, and it was a very good one. The journey, whilst difficult, um, was not traumatic, was not uh, a problem. Um, we were well looked after, and I think we've got the... Uh, the balance of rest and travel and recovery just about right in these circumstances. What we all know is that the opener will be a fast and furious one against uh, uh, what is always a challenging Red Bull team. Thank you, Coach. We are going to open the floor for questions. We're going to start with those in the room and then we'll transition on to the Zoom. Uh, Jacob, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we are now, I guess, what, um, what, what have you got a chance to, to learn about Sam and his injury coming back from and also, you know, was hoping for an update on, you know, Walker, Zimmerman, and Dan Lovitz's yep. availability for tomorrow. Yeah, um, Sam, as I've seen him this morning, I'm, I'm delighted to see he's out of a sling and he's moving around. So he's in a much, much better position than I think we felt as though he would be get, coming off the flight yesterday. Um, I, I, would, I would imagine that tomorrow might be a push. But we'll see how he goes during the day today, and and there might be some inclusion for him. We're at that point. Um, Hanny was a precaution um, coming off the field on Wednesday. Again, as long as training goes well today and he's he's due to be involved, then it will be part of the group for tomorrow. Walker and Daniel didn't travel. We had um, a game with uh, with our Huntsville group who came up. And we had a behind closed doors game here on Wednesday while we were away. Both of them came through very, very well. So those guys are certainly in consideration for the group, which is great news, obviously, for the team. Um, Randall still remains on the injured list from, uh, from his uh, uh, difficulty away with Costa Rica. And I think that's it. And when it comes to injuries, the league will be sending a, a status report uh, later tonight after 5 p.m. Uh, Claudio, go ahead. Gary, um, New York has always been a tough, tough customer to come here and there. Uh, what is this current report for this particular time, uh, playing him and Jordan about that team? Well, look, new coach, a um, couple of new additions to the group, uh, most notably, of course, their new DP, uh, Forsberg. Uh, if I'm, I'm pronouncing that right, I hope I am. Um, looks a very talented player, very experienced player. And I think, you know, as we've seen in a number of Red Bull teams, he adds a very different dimension to this group. Um, but honestly, I don't think we're going to see a lot different. You know, you're going to see a very um, competitive, you're going to see a very energetic um, you're going to see a, a team that make things happen quickly, make life very, very difficult for you on the ball. I think they're the best team in the league at making, you know, a 120 by 75 field seem like it's a postage stamp. It's constantly a problem in possession. They do it very, very well. They use that repressing or pressing side of their game as as a, a very aggressive looking and almost attacking style to their play and they've done it well um, for many many years now this this Red Bull group so I don't think any of the guys are going to be shocked at what we see at the weekend I think the only way I would be shocked is if they started to overload the build out areas and and want to be in the ball and dominate the ball more than any any team in the league, and I, I don't think that's going to be seen. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll be ready. We are ready. We know what to expect. Um, not much different to a repeat of what we saw last game of the season, really. Gary, uh, coach, a three 0 victory to start Champions Cup play. Uh, how does that win kind of give the team a little bit of confidence and swagger heading into the start of the MLS season? 
think that'll... Well, it, it has to be a boost. Um, it was a difficult encounter. Um, the circumstances surrounding it, travel, field, team that you know very little about, all play into a very good result. Um, we've put ourselves in a strong position. That now has to be pushed into the rearview mirror until Wednesday. And again, emotionally, it's going to be a, a, a big experience and a new challenge for the team. We've started the season early. We're in a very prestigious cup. But, you know, there's, there's nothing more important to any of us than being in the playoffs and doing well in our, in our season play. So we need to start well. Um, I think the game on Wednesday night will give us uh, all of the emotional and physical um, uh, necessities to start off brightly at the weekend. But one thing is for sure, it won't be easy. And, and as long as the guys understand that, which I know they do, then um, we'll go into it in the right frame of mind as we did on Wednesday night. I think that's the biggest key, yeah. how mentally you approach it. Gary, I imagine the differences between Mocha and New York. You couldn't pick two sides that are more different. How challenging is that to switch from one opponent who wants to play one style that you maybe don't know a lot about and another who you know a lot about but is going to do things completely differently? Uh, yeah, um, well, I, I would say this. On, on, a, on a turf field, um, and again, you know, whilst Mocha weren't able to perform without the ball as well as New York will, the field size will feel very similar because of what New York do. Um, the field in Mocha was at best 110 by 70. Um, the surface was very, very difficult for a turf field. Um, and Mocha themselves, as you might well have imagined, and if you saw the game, put themselves about a bit as well. They... they used it as their opportunity to really make a mark on the tournament if they were going to be able to. Um, so it was not easy physically. There were definitely spells in the game where we were able to take the sting out of it. But there, there strangely enough, were some similarities. And I would expect with some of the players in this group, Forsberg, Amaya, if he plays, and of course I don't know the team, but there are definitely individuals in this group, Manuel, who finished the season well for New York, who will, will want to stamp their authority on this game if they can and get off to a good start. Every team at the start of every season has the ambition of obviously winning MLS Cup. And there is no reason why every team shouldn't be believing that. And it's not until those result, results start rolling in that maybe reality starts to kick in. But at this point, we're MLS Cup winners, and I want to go out there and prove that, and we need to start well. Tony. Gary, continuity, consistency, they've all been one of the hallmarks of this national group since it came into MLS. Um, with the off-season changes, you have Perra Gates, Tyler Boyd, Drew Yearwood, and an influential locker room voice in Dax McCarthy moving on. Um, are we moving into kind of Nashville 2.0 in MLS? Is this the next evolution of the well, I, I think when you look at most teams, Tony, and you would have seen it an awful lot, um, you know, quite a big piece of evolving will also be down to, um, you know, where players are at in their career as well. Um, you've mentioned Dax there, um, who, who couldn't have been, I don't think, a better captain for the team and the period of time he had here. He was, was wonderful for the, for the team and for the organisation. Um, but things do change in football. They have to change, unfortunately, at some point. So I don't know about 2.0, but I would expect that that will continue. And there will be players in this group that, unfortunately, at some point will have to move on. The big challenge for us as an organisation now is to make sure that as we move forward, those players who have been wonderful for us are replaced with uh, equally as talented um, and as influential players as we might have to lose. And I think we see in Tyler Boyd uh, a, a wonderful addition to the group um, in an attacking sense. We've seen just a small sample size of what he's capable of and how versatile he is. And I think the same can be said for Drew. Drew was terrific um, on Wednesday night. I think we're seeing you know, the very early stages of 
uh, of a very useful player to this team and this organisation. Gary, it feels like every year the influence of former New York Red Bulls players grows within this team and grew just as recently as four months ago a part of that group. In a week like this, is their voice maybe a little more amplified in terms of the preparation and discussing tendencies with that group, or is it just kind of business as usual? Yeah, I, I think there's always one or two... Um, you know, discussions that those guys will continue to have with a team that goes out there. Uh, I think the, the biggest piece of the equation is that those individuals, um, when and if involved, have got a natural instinct and understanding of what they're playing against. They've lived it. Um, they appreciate the, the positives that they were able to achieve out of that Red Bull way. Um, they also understand and appreciate the difficulties of running into that. And I think those guys on and off the field can be very, very helpful um, on, on days like tomorrow when there's a quick turnaround and there's only so much that I can go through and impart for the group. Chris? Obviously, Gary, Sam Surge is a wait and see for the weekend, but what have you seen from him having a preseason under his belt rather than coming across, thrusted in, scored goals in, in League's Cup, but in terms of his relationship with the guys around him, he came in in great shape, Ross. Um, he looked sharp. He looked hungry. He looked like a player we all hoped would would turn up. Somebody who wants to make a difference and have an influence on the team. And honestly, you know, there's no point in dressing it up. We've got to find an individual that's going to get into double figures and start to support Hanny. And, and the big hope is that Sam will be that guy. Um, Pre-season gave him the opportunity to bed in with Hanny, to form a relationship with Tyler, to create a little bit more of an understanding. And I think we saw, I mean, look, it's easy to say all three of them scored on Wednesday night. But more importantly, that there have been some real nice signs of, of those three emanating towards each other in creative moments. Um, there, there's a like-minded approach there's, there's some real nice intelligence and quality out of their game. And all three of them have played in Europe. They've had different experiences. There's, there's a nice synergy between those three players. And I think as we move forward, the more time that we can get with those three guys on the field, I think you'll start to see a very different dimension and dynamic to the team. Valer, go ahead. Hey, Gary. Decision per se, but I, I would like to hear your thoughts on what's going on with the U.S. Open Cup and that situation as a whole. Oh, Valer, truly, um, I I couldn't even begin to tell you. Um, I, I can tell you what first came into my mind there, but I won't. Um, honestly, mate, we, we've just literally, you know, jumped off the plane. Probably the same as you. I have not got a clue. That's the easiest way of putting it. When that, come, when that time comes round, I will affect it the best I can. Thank you. I hope that's the best answer you can have. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah, it's been a great week so far. I'm, you know, really happy that we all got to experience uh, Champions League together, um, going down to Dominican Republic and, um, you know, being in a different competition and, um, you know, outside of our, our comfort zone, in a sense. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of the group for how we played and uh, you know I think that gives us some good momentum heading into uh, tomorrow it's a, a huge game to start the season um, it's good to, to do well in Champions League but now we have to turn the page and uh, be ready for a big test all right we're gonna kick it off Jacob go ahead please yeah. uh, Sean you know um, after after you know being held scoreless in you know eight of 12 games you know last season to you know, finish the season just to come out with three goals you know one to 12th minute you know against Mocha is there a, I, I, I guess what, what what's the reaction is, is it maybe is there maybe a sense of relief for the team just to be able to you know see the ball in the net yeah uh you know talking about last year I think we're we're all honest about um, you know, w what we did well and what we could improve on. And so uh, a big emphasis this preseason was, um, you know, how do we take that next step and how do we be more aggressive on both sides of the ball? And so um, we worked on a lot of uh, different things in preseason. We were able to try those things in a number of different preseason games against different types of opponents. And for it all to come together um, in the Dominican Republic was uh, really good for us and really good for that momentum we were talking about. Um, and uh, any time the ball 
ball hits the back of the net, I think not only for the goal scorer, but also for the team is, is really important. So um, to have a convincing win down there um, in a new environment, um, again, I think that's nothing but positive for us. And there's some good takeaways from that game. Um, but like I said, we have to quickly turn the page because this will be a much different test. Okay. Sean, a running theme, it seems, of the last few weeks. I've heard several players say the phrase, from good to great. You guys have made the playoffs the first four seasons. There's no hardware, though, and I'm sure that's a thing. You know, has that theme been something you guys have specifically spoken about, and why? Yeah, I think as a, a club, we're all really proud of uh, what's been built here so far. Um, but we have high standards, and we have a great group, a uh, great ownership group, and, and an ambitious team. And so uh, we know that, especially coming out of last season, not only our run in Leagues Cup, but also how things ended up, ended for us in, in the playoffs. Um, you know, there was a – it felt like we had more to accomplish. And so uh, that's certainly the message going into preseason. How do we take that next step? How do we continue to evolve in this league that's constantly getting better every single year? And so, um, you know – I think the, the coaches have taken ownership of that. I think the players have as well. And so preseason's been uh, strong from my perspective. You know, there's been a lot of different things, like I mentioned, that we've been able to work on. But, um, you know, it, it comes down to, to game days and taking care of business. And so, uh, like I mentioned, it's, it's going to be a huge test for us tomorrow. Uh, we have to, to be ready from the opening whistle. But uh, it's a, a, another opportunity for us to build momentum early on in the year. John, at this point, you're no stranger to facing Red Bulls after spending so much time in that system and now yep. being on the other side of it for a couple of years. What have you found is the biggest challenge of being on the other end of that? Yeah, they're a, a strong club, obviously, and I know them inside and out. Um, but, again, they have a, a new coach, some new players, and so while their philosophy is, is the same, um, you know, there are always going to be little tweaks. And so, um, you know, that's going to be no different heading into this this affair tomorrow. And, uh, you know, the number one thing is to, to set the tone early and, and to come out of the gates with the right intensity. You have to match their level of intensity, if not exceed that. And so, uh, you know, that's been the message. Um, and after some travel, after, uh, you know, a game um, in a different country, again, it's very important for us to, to have the right mentality from the onset and to not be um, caught flat-footed, to not be too comfortable in any way because we know that they're going to come out with a, a high level of intensity that has to be matched. That's the, the first step in trying to get a result tomorrow night and uh, tomorrow afternoon. And, um, you know, like I mentioned, it's a, it's a huge test for us. An individual matchup, which will be fun to watch tomorrow, could be you coming up against Emil Forsberg, the new signing uh, designated player. What do you see with that? What's important for you if you're coming yeah, he's uh, he's a guy that's obviously had a lot of experience um, in Europe and at the international level, and you know he's had a ton of success uh, in the in the Red Bull system, um, you know, especially at Red Bull Leipzig, and so you know he's familiar with the philosophy. I think he can bring even more quality to that group, and he's obviously a very talented player. So I don't, you know, obviously it's a, a big matchup in the middle of the field, not only for me but for the other. Uh, Midfielders, and so it's um, it's going to be a, a group effort for sure. Um, they have a lot of different weapons that they can can throw at us, and uh, you know they do have some alterations in in their uh, style of play, um, albeit small. But um, you know we know that they can throw some different things at us, and he's a big piece of that. He's a, a big piece of their you know offensive creation, and so we have to to respect that and, and do our best to limit him. Well. So obviously there's a lot of New York influence within this team. You had Drew and his experience in the Red Bull system as well. Where is the overlap between the identity of that system and this system, and what makes it so easy for you guys, if you feel like, to transition going from that club to this one? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the number one thing is um, an honest uh, work rate, and so I think that's really valued not only in New York, but especially here. Uh, you know, every player we have in the team knows what's expected to them, uh, knows what's expected of them on, on the defensive side of the ball. And, um, you know, that's something that we really value here is having a, a strong locker room and guys that um, are willing to work for each other. And I think that that's true for both clubs. And um, it served not only me well, but Alex and, and already Drew. And so it's, it's been great to see Drew come in here. Um, he fits in, into the locker room really, really well. Um, the guys already really love him and respect him. And, uh, you know, he's obviously a, a, an absolute animal on the field. So um, it's been a welcome addition, and we're all really happy to have him. And, um, you know, I hope that answers your, your question about the overlap. Tony. Sean, um, 
the season ended with a decision day game against the Red Bulls. Yeah. The season starts with a game against yeah. the Red Bulls. So I've got two points, I suppose. First, what was your reaction, your instant reaction yeah. when you first saw the schedule come out? Uh, and secondly, um, Nashville, I, I, I think over the years, you know, the Red Bull team is one they haven't really been able to crack yet. And you've been part of that mm -hmm. team on that side. Um, what makes you confident that you can finally find the formula to get past this team? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting you say that because even uh, in 2021, my last year in New York, we uh, we had decision day here in Nashville. So there's always these uh, um, interesting uh, schedules of, of the games. But, um, you know, first of all, when I saw the, the schedule, it's always great to open the season at home. And it reminded me of the New York City FC game we had last year and, and what a special occasion that was. The energy in the stadium was incredible, and, and we're going to need that from the fans again uh, tomorrow. That's really important in, in how we play, especially at home, and, um, you know, they give us a big lift. Um, sorry, what was your, your next question? Zach was really just kind of finding the formula to, to, to finally right. get that win against the Ripples. Yeah, you know, actually, I think last year we had our chances um, on that last day of the, the season, but, um, you know, it's always tricky against them. You can't shut off uh, for a single second. They're looking for for that, um, you know, advantage at, at any point. And so um, it went down to the final whistle uh, against them last year, and, and I don't think that'll be much different from uh, tomorrow. It's going to be a very intense game, but I think that um, – you know, our group has a lot of experience against them now. And again, you have to respect the opponent. You know that they're, they're a strong team. You know that they're going to be very intense from the opening whistle. But I'm confident we can match that. And, um, you know, along with the fans, have a, a really strong performance. Sean, you just stated part of my question, the fans. The fans, you set a high bar. And the fans expect you to be in the playoffs like it was easy every single year. Now, having said that, they expect you to be there. What would you tell them in terms of uh, doing, being able to do the next step, which is going part of the game? Yeah, first of all, you know, for me coming to Nashville, I've been blown away by the support um, in this city. Of course, for the other teams um, that play here, like the Titans and the Preds, but um, especially for, for Nashville SC, I've been uh, so impressed um, by the turnout. And, you know, that's been really fun for me to be a part of. Uh, the, the energy in this city is, is really special. And I think as players, um, as a staff, as a club, we have a responsibility um, to, to find success no matter what. And so I think, um, you know, as fans, of course, they, they have high expectations as well. And uh, we want to give them a winning product. And we want to be something that they're excited about every single week. And so we have to earn that every, every time we're on the field. And so while we have goals of winning MLS Cup and winning, um, you know, the Champions League competition, uh, you know, it, we have to take it game by game. And tomorrow is just a, a great opportunity, a home opener. You know, the fans are going to be really excited for it, as they should be first game of the, the season at home. And um, again, it's a it's a responsibility that we all have as players to put in strong performances and get them excited and, and give them every reason to come back week in, week out. And I think that that will play a, whole, uh, a big role in not only um, them being satisfied, but it, it continues to lift the players each and every week, and we have to earn that. <laughs>